Hello everyone. Today we continue our reflection on Jesus sermon on the mount. From a mountain side on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus began the sermon with a list of eight blessings from God. He said that those who humbly trust in God, those who mourn for the afflictions of others, those who are gentle and patient, those who desire righteousness, those who show mercy toward the sinners and needy, those who are pure in heart, those who seek and promote peace, and those who are willing to suffer for his gospel are the blessed people. For they are rewarded with mercy, comfort, security, peace, the presence of God, and a place in heaven. And then Jesus spoke about the role of his disciples in the world. He called them the salt of the earth and the light of the world and said their mission on earth is to preserve life, heal wounds and add flavor to the lives of others and profess their faith in God openly and engage in good works in their community for the glory of God. Today we read the further demands made by Jesus. But before that, Jesus made it clear to his disciples that he did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. Friends, here the word law is Torah in Hebrew. It refers to God's teaching, guidance and instructions for living. The Torah is often understood to consist of the first five books of the Bible, but it also refers to the scriptures in general. And the word fulfill is likeum in Hebrew. It is mentioned in the Bible in various contexts. It means to uphold or to complete or to explain. Here Jesus came to fulfill the law, which means that Jesus came to properly interpret the Torah so that people can obey it as God really intends. Over the centuries, the Jews, particularly the Pharisees and scribes, had developed their own interpretations of the law to suit their own ends. Oftentimes, they used the law quite literally and imposed burdens on others, but they themselves failed to keep them. Jesus came to fulfill the law, therefore it means that he came to give the true and full meaning of the law. And Jesus used phrases like, you have heard, but I tell you, to point out that he was not contradicting the law, but explaining it. Jesus wanted to bring them from the literal interpretation of the laws to the spirit of the laws. He wanted them to focus not only on external evil acts, but also on the internal attitudes and motives that led to such acts. He often did reinterpret or explain or add to the laws, sometimes in very radical ways. As a result, some of his teachings were very controversial. Luke writes that some people in his hometown of Nazareth became so angry with him that they tried to throw him off a cliff. Friends, in today's Gospel we read four of the laws that Jesus expounded. 1. Jesus referred to the law that forbade murder and explained that it includes anger, resentment and revenge. He indicated that holding a grudge against others can consume a person with hatred and damage his relationship with others and God. He even gave a stern warning to those who called other people fools or renegades and said that they would be judged and condemned to hell. He recommended reconciliation first for the persons concerned before they go and make offerings to God. For Jesus, reconciliation with God was a high priority. He died on the cross so that we might be reconciled to God. 2. Jesus expanded the law that prohibited adultery to cover lustful thoughts and desires as well. He explained that not only the actual physical sexual act outside of marriage is considered a sin against the sixth commandment, but also lust and the desire to do so 
or in themselves sins against the commandment. 3. Jesus expounded the law of divorce to encourage lifelong fidelity between spouses and their commitment to each other, and at the same time help each other from falling into sin. As a matter of fact, nowhere in the first five books is there any law which directly makes provision for divorce. However, a law addressing a particular problem of marriage in the book of Deuteronomy has become the basis for almost all Jewish divorce laws. Divorce and remarriage were common even before the days of Moses. Moses did not institute divorce. He simply regulated it to discourage hasty divorces and to enable divorced women to remarry more easily. It is said that when a man takes a woman and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some uncleanness in her, in her, he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house. According to this law, therefore, divorce was allowed but carefully regulated. Under God's law, the marriage contract could be dissolved only if there was a real cause for a certificate of divorce. Jesus also therefore forbade divorce except in the case of unlawful marriages, but further added that divorce and remarriage are tantamount to adultery. 4. Jesus pointed out the law that forbade false oaths by urging them to avoid oaths altogether. Friends, in the Old Testament, God commanded the people to take their oaths in His name, not in the name of other gods, and that they should not swear falsely in God's name. At the time of Jesus, the practice of taking oaths became more and more common to the point that if a person did not keep his promises, the people would invoke God as their witness who was expected to punish the oath taker. Slowly, out of reverence for God, people started to try and find other ways to honor their words so that God would not be dishonored if they did not fulfill their promise. They did not realize that their simple yes and no were just as binding as if they were uttered in the form of an oath. Jesus identified the problem as an issue of honesty and integrity. So he said to his disciples, Let your yes mean yes and your no means no. In other words, Jesus told them that if they kept breaking their promises but at the same time did not want to profane God's name, the solution is not to swear by something else, but rather change their attitude so that they truly become truthful in their daily life. Thus, Jesus wanted his disciples to go beyond the understanding at the time to fulfill the purposes of the, these laws. By following these laws perfectly in thought and deed, both in the letter and in the intent of the heart, Jesus wanted them to life of righteousness or holiness higher than the scribes and Pharisees. He also reminded them that whoever breaks one of the least of the commandments and teaches others to do so will be cast out as worthless persons, but whoever obeys and teaches will be regarded great. Friends, what do we learn from this gospel? Even today, some of Jesus' teachings still seem very radical to many people. All of us continually struggle to obey the commands of our Lord. But the book of Sirach, in today's first reading, reminds us that if we choose to keep the commandments, they will save us. If we trust in God, we too will live. In the same way, the author of the book of Genesis says, if you are doing right, surely you ought to hold your head high. But if you are not doing right, sin is crouching at the door, waiting to pounce on you. However, even then, you can still overcome the temptation if you will it. 
Friends, we may not have killed anyone with our own hands, but we are just as guilty as a murderer if we nurse anger, hatred and desire to take revenge against others, which sometimes lead to violence including vulgarity, abusive and violent language and aggressive behavior. Therefore, as Jesus says, let us strike at the root of murder and by getting rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander and all types of evil thoughts. Moreover, let us humbly and courageously reach out and reconcile with others. 2. We may not be committing adultery, but we might be regularly entertaining lustful thoughts, feelings and fantasies. Following the instruction Jesus gave to his disciples, let us rid ourselves of impure thoughts and lustful desires. Let us try to separate ourselves from people, materials and circumstances that corrupt our minds and incite lustful desires. 3. As Christians, we must encourage and support one another as we worship God, grow in our understanding of the exclusive relationship between one man and one woman and promote lifelong commitments. If you are separated or recently divorced and are lacking peace and joy, I encourage you to seek reconciliation if possible and be emotionally healed. 4. Let us avoid making oaths. Instead, as Jesus suggests, let us be true to our word, allow our yes to be yes and no to be no, and speak and live in integrity before God in Christ. Amen. God bless you.